Hi. Thanks very much for having me today, guys. I'd say the key things for, for us to focus on today is that um, foreign mining is actually building the first zero carbon copper mine. That's our plan right now. As you can see, the, the background and, and where our, our project is located in Saskatchewan, it's the number one jurisdiction in the world. Um, and we are very lucky to have hydropower, which gives us a head start to build a zero carbon project. So if we could go to the next slide. And the next, please. I will give you a little bit of background about foreign mining in one page. So I'd say the first thing for you to know is the, is the importance of the people and the leadership team we have in place. So Pierre Lassonde, um, Darren Morkum and Dan Myerson are the three main shareholders. Pierre Lassonde is the co-founder of Franco Nevada. He um, took the gold company from $1 million to today's market cap of $24 billion. Um, and he's very still very involved in that, but um, this is the only base metals company that he has bought, um, and he owns 10% of Foran. Um, so we, we hope to do something similar there. Um, myself, I was with a, a company called Glencore for you know the last 10 years, uh, and then I left Glencore. Uh, I was the head of the North America, so I saw all the North American operations, and I chose to to go for um, to 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 leave Glencore and buy for buy into Foran. Um, I, I don't take a salary. Uh, I, I get everything in equity because I want to be aligned with other investors, so that we can all be be the same and um, make sure our centers are the same. Um, our assets our assets are tier one in every sense of the word. Um, it's copper, zinc, gold, silver, located in Saskatchewan, Canada. It's the best mining jurisdiction in the world. We have the second largest mining resource uh, in that 100-year-old uh, jurisdiction. So it's a very prospective land package. Um, it is a VMS type of ore body, um, which is, stands for volcanic massive sulfide. Um, while we have found a lot of copper and zinc, we are very excited about the, the gold potential here as well. Uh, so that is something that we will we will start uh, pursuing further more. Um, all our infrastructure is already built, all the roads, all the power lines, uh, everything is ready. So the capex to build our project is very little. Um, as I said, it's going to be carbon neutral. So it'll be zero carbon, uh, zero harm, which is, actually makes the economics of the mine much better. It's also better for people, for the environment and the planet. Uh, and it's uh, you know to ensure we have blue skies forever. Uh, our main commodities are going to be copper and zinc, which are very important for the green electrification. Uh, but we'll also have a lot of gold and silver. Um, it's uh, very cheap right now today. So I will send you, uh, I'll, I'll take you through some more information. If you could go to the next slide, please. This just shows you um, the how, how, how big uh, Pierre, Darren and myself are. Uh, again, you know, Pierre was the founder of the number one performing precious metals company in the world, which was Franco Nevada. Um, and he thinks foreign could be the same for copper. Uh, if you go to the next slide. This is just to, to show you a little bit what happened with, uh, with uh, Franco Nevada, um, the, the market cap and how it's continuously li li risen. Um, and as I said before, this is the only development stage base metals investment uh, that uh, Pierre Lissander owns today. Um, Pierre and me are very close. Um, he's very involved, and it's um, it's a it's a very it's a very good partnership. Next slide, please. What we are showing on this slide is just the location of the asset, because location is is everything. Um, and as I said, all the infrastructure is already built. There's an airport railway line, all the roads, all of that is good. We will be using electric vehicles 
for all the roads, both underground mine and on the surface of the mine. Uh, uh, Saskatchewan was named the number one mining jurisdiction in the world. Uh, so we are very lucky with that as well. Next slide, please. This slide's quite interesting. So, so what we are showing here is if you, these are these are all the deposits that have been in um, in in the camp uh, before in the greenstone belt. Now that have turned into mines. Now what it shows you in, is the orange is what the size of the deposit was the resource before it went into the before it went into the um, production phase, and then the end bit is the blue bit is what was added post production. So you can see that McElvina Bay is already the second biggest and it hasn't even started producing yet. Now, it's, so it's likely that it will double even further from here, which means it'll be a 70 year life of mine. Now, the reason for this is because all these mines are underground mines, so they're not uh, big open pits, so you don't know how big it is at the beginning. Because it's underground, you have to keep drilling and that's what happens. Um, so we're very excited about that. Next slide, please. So here, I mean, this is what, what, what I'm just explaining a little bit about a, a VMS deposit is, and the, you can see, these are a list of some of the, the best VMS deposits. And as you can see, they are all found in Canada and they go for, for over 90 years. So, but the, the main thing that I like about the VMS is the CapEx efficiency of the project because you know, it's very low capex compared to a big copper porphyry. If you see some of these copper porphyry projects, they, they cost between five and 10 billion. You look at what's happened in uh, Oyotogi in Mongolia, it's uh, costing them $10 billion. That's because it's a porphyry. Whereas you look at uh, a VMS thing, you know, our capex is only $200, $200 million. So it's significantly less. So as an investor, you, you get access to the, the, the 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 mine much cheaper uh, and quicker and then you have a much greater rate of return on your investment next slide please this just shows you you know some of the the mines that, um, that people have compared Macovina Bay to um, and you can see how big they they have become um, and you know how much gold that these copper mines can actually produce it's, it's a significant amount. Next slide, please. So um, we this carbon neutrality and ESG, we, we think that this is going to become a much more important thing to value a mine uh, going forward. Um, you know, they used to say that the most important metric to value a mine was, was um, the cash cost. Now, our cash cost is very low. It's 44 cents per pound. So we are very, so we're a tier one asset in that sense. But I think the next thing to rank a tier one asset will be your CO2 emissions per ton. And we will be zero CO2. So we will be the number one performing asset in the world in that sense, both on cash cost and on uh, greenhouse gas intensity. Next slide, please. This slide is to, to show a valuation. Um, now, the, company, the, the way the, the rules work in, in Canada is when you have a NI43101 is they, you cannot publish a valuation basis, basis your anything other than reserves. So what we are doing right now is we are, we are um, increasing our reserves so that when we publish our feasibility study later this year, our reserves will go from nine years to 16 years, um, but that will still only represent a third of the size of the deposit. And as I said, with these VMS underground deposits, you convert reserves very easily, but you convert as you drill down. So it takes time. So to value this asset appropriately on reserves, I don't think is correct today. However, I can take you through some numbers very quickly because if you look at the, the, the value of the, the NSR today, it's, it is much more than $167 per ton. It's currently $250 per ton. 
So if you were to say the following numbers, I'll do a quick calculation for you. You say $250 per ton NSR minus your operating costs, which it says there 99.34. So let's say two, call it 100. So you say 250 minus 100 is $150 per ton of all profit. Now we have to convert it back to cash flow. So we say 150 times our throughput, which is 1.3 million tons. So that, that works out to $195 million per year free cash flow. Now you have to say how many years of reserve. And as I said, we think we'll convert um, additional five years. So let's call it 15 or 14 years, if you say 14 years times by 195 or 14 and a half times 195, that's $2.8 billion. You then take away your capex of 261 million. So it's now $2.55 billion. And to convert that into an NPV, you would divide it by two. So you're looking at roughly $1.3 billion today. So and typically in Canada, um, a, a, a development at you know 0. 0.5 to 0. 0.8 times the the the, N, the NAV, which we just said is 1.3 billion. So you should trade between 700 and 1 million dollars should be the valuation. Today we are trading at 100 million, so you've got seven to ten times upside, and that is just on Nakovina Bay. That doesn't include. The, the development of the other deposits it doesn't include the premium that you'll get for your zero carbon. Um, all these types of things are still to come. Um, so very exciting times and very attractive valuation. If you go to the next slide, um, this, this slide is just showing you how, how CapEx efficient it is. So you can see it's the lowest development CapEx out of all the other comparable projects. If you go to the next slide, again, it's just showing you how, how um, efficient it is in that the, the CapEx divided by your annual copper, and it's so attractive. And then there's so much room for, for economies of scale and further expansion of production, which is very exciting. Next slide, please. Yeah, I think this one is the biggest uh, thing to, to, to show is to say, you know, without including any exploration success, which we think we will have some, foreign should be greater than $500 million market cap today. Uh, US, and right now it's, you know, 80 million US. So there's a lot of room to, to, to do. We did a valuation the other day in terms of how much metal is actually in the ground and then converted it back to a share price. And it worked up to $50 per ton share price. So it is significant. Um, next slide, please. This just shows you how when commodity prices rally, uh, producers will, will perform better than the commodity price. But it, it is developers that perform the best. And you can see in the last cycle, developers went up 911%, whereas Producers only went up 248%. Next slide, please. This is to, to show you, I, I recently left and I joined in the end of October, um, early November. Um, and, you know, we are making a lot of good progress and we are very excited uh, for the future to come. Uh, next slide, please. Next slide, please. Uh, this just shows you the, the, the exploration, you know, see, I've been telling you numbers about Makovina Bay, but Makovina Bay is just one of our many deposits. So we have Thunder, we have Balsam, we have Flinty, we have Big Stone. Big Stone, you know, we, 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 we drilled the highest uh, grade copper drill hole in North America in the last 10 years, which is 100 meters at 2% copper. Um, so... This, this is very exciting, and we haven't even done our precious metals exploration yet, so there's plenty of things to come here. Next slide, please. 
yeah, and then I think so for this year, our focus is going to be we, we started the drill program uh, for the feasibilities drilling to increase your reserve, as I was talking about in evaluation. Uh, we will also be updating the feasibility study to show the big evaluation. We'll also be drilling some of our other deposits, Big Stone, uh, as well as Thunder. Uh, and then we expect to get our final permit as well for construction and, and then to advance construction at the end of the year. Next slide, please. And then this is the last last page, just to highlight again, you know, jurisdiction number one. Um, so if you can go back to the previous slides, it, just to show you the jurisdiction is the number one in the world, very friendly in Saskatchewan, Canada. The infrastructure is already built. It's all going to be hydro, renewable energy, so carbon free power. Uh, we have a good path with our permitting process going well. Is a lot, a lot of growth here. Um, and then the management and investors, as I said, you know, you've got the best mining investor in the world who owns 10% of the company. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Dan. Uh, just a few questions here. Uh, the first one from uh, one of the audience, Song, uh, asking about the metallurgy. The, is that straightforward? Yes, it's very straightforward. So this type of metal metallurgy is... Um, is very easy. Um, I have a lot of experience with it as well. Um, and we will produce two products. It will be a copper concentrate, which will be high gold and high silver. And then you'll produce a zinc concentrate, which will be very clean. Okay. So when, and when I say how clean the metallurgy is, it's very low in all the deleterious elements. So it, uh, it, it, it is a premium product and will get sold for a higher price. Sure. And then the question from Kin here is asking for and have any Asia strategic partner in mind, like joint venture or major equity interest? No, I mean, we, we will, we, we have not uh, spoken to them yet, but, you know, I know a lot of the guys like um, Shandong Gold, uh, Zijin, uh, all, all of the, the bigger players in, in China and the, the, the state owned entities. Because um, I used to travel to China a lot for business. So uh, um, I think it's something that we could look at uh, for sure, because they would be a very good partner. Sure. Uh, this one from Tarek here is asking, do you foresee any issues in terms of permitting process there? No, the permitting process, everything is going very well so far. Uh, we have a very good relationship with the, the government in Saskatchewan. Uh, we also have a very good relationship with the First Nations. It's the Peter Ballantyne Cree First Nations. Good. One last question here from Brian. Uh, how are you going to finance the project to production? I, assuming that you are doing it on your own? Yes. We're, right now we are doing it on our own. Uh, you can see we just uh, raised $25 million, which is for the drilling and the feasibility study for this year. Um, that was four times oversubscribed. So we had interest for about eighty million dollars, and we'll only um, so that which was very strong, strong show of support for the company. Uh, and now we don't need any more money for for this year. So to finance two hundred million US dollars, which is what we need for the the capex, is not a lot uh, of money for us. It's not a big ask. Uh, so we are quite easy to do that. And we will be able to use debt. Today, we have no debt. So we can use a portion of debt, which means we will optimize our returns for our equity holders. Uh, when, when I say optimize, I mean maximize our return for the equity holders. And as I said, I don't take a salary, so I'm an equity holder. For sure. Thank you, Dan, for sharing with us your story and update from Foreign Mining today. Thank you, Gilbert. Thank you for having me, guys.